So now let's talk about uh, diffusion, solid diffusion. We give some high level introduction and also describe so called uphill diffusion, downhill diffusion. Then in this lecture, we will talk about uh, one type of mechanism focus on, so called interstitial diffusion mechanism, and also relate that to derive from a kind of simple atomic scale model point of view. How do we get so called fixed first law? Fixed first law that relates the concentration, concentration gradient to the so called flux or the flow of things. Okay? So, as we mentioned earlier, in terms of mechanism or the routes, one route of diffusion would be so called uh, substitutional diffusion. Substitute, replace. Okay? One replace another, substitutional diffusion. And uh, for substitutional diffusion, one possible mechanism is so called exchange mechanism. What I draw here would be, okay, let's say solid crystal structure with A element, and I have a impurity, B atom, a so called solute atom in there. Okay, and how does the B atom diffuse or move at atomic scale. Okay, of course you can see one possibility would be A and B to directly exchange their position, right? How does A move? Or how does B move? Directly exchange position with a neighboring A. This is so-called exchange mechanism. But as you can imagine, after it exchange, B moves one spot to a neighboring spot, exchange. But as you can imagine, this process will have to overcome a lot of barrier, a high energy barrier, because the atoms are packed pretty close, pretty dense. It would be difficult. You have to push around, like in a very crowded bus, it's difficult for one person to move because it really has to push around versus a weakened bus. Okay? So typically this route doesn't, this mechanism or route, remember we said mechanism means route. This route doesn't really happen within the bulk. It may happen, read to yourself, over the surface because at least that's one free kind of region on the top that things can exchange. It needs high activation energy. Okay, so that's about so-called exchange mechanism for so-called substitutional diffusion. Another so-called mechanism route is by vacancy mechanism. Vacancy, which means a missing atom. Okay, we have A and B atom together and the B sits here, and let's say at any moment I would have a missing atom near A, and naturally, well, at the next moment, where would this B go? <laughs> of course, naturally, naturally, by just probability, it goes to the other weekend, neighboring weekend position, right? This is so-called uh, way more common. It happens within solid, and it has, compared with the left one, needs much lower activation energy. Okay, And this would be the pre predominant way for so-called substitutional diffusion. Substitute. I have matrix of A with element substituted or replaced by element B. And what are the features for such so-called substitutional diffusion? Huh. One thing that you would notice as a draw is the size of the diffusion atoms, the size of B versus A, they are kind of all, almost the same, similar to the surrounding element. Okay, if copper diffusing in nickel, copper and nickel, or copper in zinc, those elements are highly similar to each other, they would go through substitutional diffusion and in particular by this so called vacancy route because it needs a lower barrier. And we have this example, copper in nickel, or oxygen diffusion in a oxide material. And a success 
so-called diffusion elemental step, a success jump. You see from here to here, to the neighboring weakness, we can imagine as a jump. The successful jump rate, remember kinetics, this class is about magnetism, the route, as well as about kinetics means rate. The rate, a successful, how fast or how frequent can it jump, can it happen, depends pretty much determined by so-called uh, thermal activation, frequency. Every element, as you learn in thermodynamics, now sitting still, they would vibrate, they would try to move, okay? Thermal activation. But if only thermal activation, like here, it activates, it cannot really go. So, in order for the vacancy mechanism to move, for the atom to move, it also needs a so-called nearby vacancy. A nearby vacancy. And the nearby vacancy, the vacancy concentration, the higher the concentration, the more likelihood one is surrounded by at least one vacancy. Make sense? And the vacancy concentration from what you learn in thermodynamics is determined, one, by temperature. Typically, the higher the temperature, the more the vacancy, but also by so-called in, intentional so-called doping. That's what you learned uh, by introducing certain impurity. It may also introduce vacancy. This is so-called substitutional diffusion. In comparison, there will be so-called interstitial diffusion. Okay, We have atoms arranged in this way. Interstitial means it's between the atoms, okay? I may have my initial so-called uh, salute, impurity atom, but interstitial means that salute atom is much smaller than the host atom, okay? It's sitting at the interstitial side, and uh, next moment, as you can naturally imagine, it will go to a neighboring interstitial and then maybe go further this is so-called interstitial diffusion magnetism that's for 2d lattice at 3d okay if we refresh our mind a little bit that you have learned in your materials engineering fcc bcc these represent the so-called crystal structure fcc bcc i draw it here fcc BCC, C for cubic, F for face, C for centered, face centered cubic. The black dots are for the atoms. Make sense? The black dots are for atom, face centered cubic. I have a atom at the face center, atom at face center, left center, bottom center, front center, back center. This guy is so called BCC, B for body center of your cubic okay which means the at the center of the cube there is the atom what is this guy that's the center for a neighboring cube makes sense that's what you learned in crystal structure and where are the so-called interstitial side these so-called uh, open circle very small open circle i labeled them as so-called interstitial sides in particular we label them so-called octahedral interstitial side. Octahedral interstitial side, let's look at this point. It's at the center between, do you see this center, so-called octahedral? It has eight faces. One, two, three, four. And the bottom also one, two, three, four. Octahedral side at the center of this, we would have a so-called octahedral interstitial. Similarly, you can construct similar octahedral and find this guy at center, this guy, this guy are all octahedral interstitial sites for FCC. And for BCC, the octahedral side would be at face center. Do you see how the octahedral is drawn? As well as the edge center. You can draw it for yourself, you will find it's indeed, this guy is also a so-called octahedral side. Okay? So, the impurity of solute atom, if it sits here, it may jump from one octahedral side to a neighboring octahedral side. From one octahedral side to a neighboring octahedral side. 
Okay, and the feature for such so-called interstitial diffusion would be the size of the diffusion atoms or the solute atom is what? Much smaller than the host or the matrix material. Much smaller. Typically, how, how much smaller? To example, one is carbon diffusion in iron. The carbon has element atom size of only 70 picometer, 0 0.07 Armstrong. Sorry, 0.7 Armstrong. This guy, iron is 140 pico or 1.4 Armstrong or 0.14 nanometer. So it's roughly half the size. Similarly, copper diffusion in silicon. The carbon diffusion in iron, that's important for any steel production, any tool for any tool. This guy, copper diffusion in silicon is critical in semiconductor. People know copper is a notorious poison for any semiconductor device, silicon based. Because copper, its element size is much smaller than silicon size. And as you can imagine, copper, if there's a little bit of copper contamination in the device, the copper will quickly go through the silicon and make your device, semiconductor, lossy or completely bad. Loss means it consumes more energy than it should. It gives more heat. And a complete bad, which means your PN junction got sh shunted, got shorted. Okay? So the successful so-called interstitial diffusion or interstitial jump for so-called salute atom, for any of these small atoms, will determine primarily by, of course, some activation, right? It has to try. It has to have the tendency to jump, to vibrate. Okay? What about uh, the, does it need a neighboring interstitial site? Well, typically we are dealing with so-called dilute. The t your typical steel is pretty pure iron with a little bit of carbon. Your pre typical silicon device is pretty pure silicon with very little copper. So in most cases, all these neighboring interstitial sites are not occupied or weakened. So for interstitial diffusion, it's pretty much determined only by thermal activation because most of the neighboring interstitial sites 